unto our God on this morning as we get ready to celebrate. cars I, I know we have these physical um, barriers but there is no physical barrier that that can keep or hinder the presence of God no physical barrier no no circumstance no situation that can hinder the move of God hinder what God is trying to do and speak to us so where you are in your cars I need you to take about 30 seconds just to go ahead and start giving God praise Hallelujah. 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 Come on, I need you to praise him like the very words coming out of your mouth are setting atmospheres for healing, are setting the atmosphere for deliverance, are setting the atmosphere for God to come and rule and reign right where we are. He's promised in his word he'll meet us right where we are. If you believe that, come on and lift up your hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. We're so glad that we serve a king whose kingdom stands forever. It will never fall. It will never fail. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord, God. Thank you, Lord, God. Yes, Lord, God. Your kingdom stands forever, God. Yes, it does, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Come on, sing with us. We won't be quiet. We won't be quiet. We won't be ashamed. We'll keep on. Come 
you. I need more of you. Jesus. Jesus. Sing Jesus. 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 One more time, sing Jesus, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, keep calling his name, keep calling his name, keep calling his name. Oh Jesus, my faithful father, my firm foundation. God, we declare victory in your name, God. That's for any circumstance, any situation, wherever you find yourself, there's already an assured victory. We speak that over your life. Because our God has never lost a battle. And he never will. He absolutely never will. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God.
defeated the darkness He has never lost a battle And He never will, He never will And He never will, He never will And He never will, He never will will. Sing, He is my faithful Father He is my faithful Calling me out Of the dark Night cannot whisper away What He said in the light Yeah, God Sing, He is my firm foundation My anchor won't be moved Storms may collide, storms may collide, but my soul is on fire with his word. Yeah, sing, we'll listen to, we'll listen to the sound of power on my lips. Jesus has broken, he has never lost. Sing, who are you? to the sound a power on Jesus has broken he has never lost never lost a battle sing who are you great that you should not follow Jesus defeated Never lost, yeah, a battle, and he never will, 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 and he never will, he never will, sing it out, and he never will, he never will. He has never lost a battle. 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 He
never lost a battle. Yeah, he has never lost a battle. Yeah, God, as we think back over our lives, God, we can declare and decree God with confidence. He has never lost a battle. Yeah, he has never lost a battle. We have never been forsaken, God. We have never been forsaken, God. You have never lost a battle, God. With you, we always win, 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 God. With you, we always win. With you, we always win, God. He has never lost a battle. He has never lost a battle. never lost a battle who are you great mountain that you should not follow Jesus defeated the darkness he has never lost a battle sing that out when listen to when listen to the sound a power on my lips Jesus has broken the curse He has never lost God Speak to your mountain Who are you? You should not follow Jesus defeated He has never lost a battle and he never will 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 today even if you feel like you're a little bit behind even if you feel like you're losing the game if there's time still on the clock somebody ought to say and he never will and he never will he never will Jesus and he never will Jesus Somebody grab a mic over there. We, we ain't worshiped together in so long. We all right. Key, grab the mic for me. Yes. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to talk right to yourself. No matter how bad the pain is right now. Even if you showed up a little discouraged today, he never will, 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 
He never will. 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 Lord God, we thank you so much on this Sunday morning. You've been so kind, so gracious to us. So gracious to us. No matter where we found ourselves, you still had a willingness to come near us. Hmm. Father, you have you and you alone. Not me, not anybody else can take credit. You and you alone have sustained this ministry through every high, through every low, through everything that made us look powerful, and through everything that even made us look weak. It was you, God, who got the credit when it looked like we were doing all things right. But it was you, God, who kept us when it looked like we were doing all things wrong. And Father, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for how you kept my mind. Thank you for how you kept my heart. The love for this ministry still remains. The love to serve still remains. And we know there's work still to be done. Thank you for being a keeper. That's our testimony now. God is a keeper. Now, Holy Spirit, <laughs> haven't seen these people in so long. Help me. Help me say something to them that you said to me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Y'all roll down your window and holler out, amen. Hallelujah. If you love Jesus, go ahead and honk your horn for me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now, if you love this church family, come on, honk your horn for me. <laughs> That's a lot of love. <laughs> Lisa Sweeney is in the house. <laughs> yes, Lord. I love you too, Lisa. I love you too. <laughs> CYM, 13 years. Y'all look at me for a second. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your encouragement and your consistency. You know, I, yes, I've got God. And yes, I've got the Holy Spirit. But without you, you have been my inspiration. <laughs> There's always somebody honking late. <laughs> but there are no late comers in the kingdom, amen. <laughs> I so appreciate you and so love you. Tassie has already threatened me. She said, I can't get emotional today. She said it uglier than that, y'all. So y'all pray for Tassie. We got to get back to church so Tassie can stay saved. But I am so grateful for you. I know I need to preach. God, I don't want to keep you out here too long. It's colder than we expected. And, we, you know, the numbers of COVID are rising. And I need y'all to be safe. And I need y'all to be healthy. Because we still have a world to change. Somebody say amen. So I'm going to make my way back over here. And I'm going to 
talk to you for a few minutes. Thank you so much. Music ministry, I missed y'all so much. Come on, can we bless the Lord for our music ministry? Yes. Y'all read my mind, fellas. I'm trying to hope that my notes don't fly away. I am a little emotional, Tassie. Y'all can't hear me? Okay. If you're here, and if you, I'm sorry. If you can't hear me in the back, can we, can we give it a little more juice? If not, listen, we're going to have to use a little technology. Go, on, pull, go ahead and pull your phones out. We are streaming. So if you, I know you want to hear it live. And I'm almost tempted to tell you step out your car. Well, you can step out if you stay near it. Amen. But you can also stream with us. Go on to the Facebook page. And so that way you can hear it if you're having a hard time hearing in the back. I um, feel like I don't forgot how to do this in person. 13 years, 13 years. The significance to that number and the Lord began to place some things on my heart. Um, it's been a very difficult year. Very difficult year. Much loss, much regret, much disappointment. But God has still been faithful. Been a difficult few years. And so just to be able to stand here today, I don't take that for granted whatsoever. God has been good when we were at our worst. Somebody say amen to that. Come on, Wendell, get to the word. I just ain't seen y'all in a minute, so I'm I'm kind of slow walking, looking at you and if I thought the mic would hang out, I'd walk out here to all the cars and just want to look at you. My son said, no, I will not. Okay, all right. All right. I'm, he still has some tuition. He needs me to pay. I understand. <laughs> Let's get to the word. I want to talk to you a little bit. Today, I'm going to step into my prophetic mantle. I don't mess with that often. But today I've got to talk to you in a manner to declare some things. In this prophetic posture, I got to end some things and start some things. Somebody say amen. Say that with me. We got to end some things. And we got to start some things. This word today is not a guarantee. It is permission. Somebody say permission. All prophecy is, is God's desire from heaven to earth, letting you know what he's ready to do. But he will never trump your will. He will never trump your will. It is permission. It's God's way of saying the door is open. You get to walk through if you so choose. Anybody choosing? I am. I am. I feel like if I don't, I might die where I am. So I've got to choose. Galatians, the fourth chapter. Verses 1 through 2. Listen to what Paul told them and listen to what Paul is telling you and I today. He says, now I say, as long as the heir is a child. As long as the heir acts like a child. He does not differ at all from a slave Although he is owner of everything. Did y'all hear what I just read? But he is under guardians and managers, guardian governors and tutors, King James says, until the date set by the father. Now I say as long as the heir is a child, he ain't no different from a slave. Let's talk this prophetic word over us entitled coming to age. Somebody say the coming of age, coming of age. I am coming of age. That's a fancy way of saying I'm growing up. CYM, our Christian faith 
sprung forth from the Jewish faith. If you read your Bible and you look in the Old Testament, the Old Testament is the foundation of the Jewish faith. We that believe in Christ venture over into the New Covenant because that presents the work that Christ did. Our Jewish brothers don't believe yet that the Messiah has come. We know that not to be true. We know he has come, he's died, he has risen. But we still don't vacate the beginning. And so that's why our faith is oftentimes referred to as Judeo-Christian. We are connected. Somebody say connected. connected. And so one of the things that's true about the Jewish faith is that they have a custom. In fact, it's a law. The law to them says this, that when a boy or a girl reaches the age of 13 life changes dramatically they see the age 13 as the age of responsibility when they become 13 responsibility shifts from their parents to them now, I know that might scare you because you think about some of our own 13-year-olds and you're like, there's no way in the world. But the truth, be the, matter, the truth of the matter is it really ain't their fault. It's ours, the ones that were raising them. But in this era, in the Jewish faith, the child was being prepared and conditioned to know that he or she, when they hit that 13-year mark, that responsibility for their lives now shifted to them. It was so significant that when they had the bar mitzvahs, what they called for the young men, and the bat mitzvahs, what they called for the young ladies, whenever they had those ceremonies, the father would stand and pray, thanking the Lord that the sins of his child have now left him and returned to his child. He's shifting it back to them. It is saying that from this moment on, my decisions fall upon me. And those that are streaming the next slide will tell you what those areas of focus became for the 13-year-old. And I need this to be me talking to you. There were three particular things that epitomized their maturity. And they now have to shift their focus. That one, that first thing says the law. The second says tradition. And the last says ethics. A sign of your maturity is that those three things begin to be preeminent in your life. The first is the law. What is the law, KB? The law is that when I am mature, the law or the word now becomes critical to me. That should make sense to you because if I'm assuming responsibility in a world that I have yet to really meet and I know I'm going to encounter some things that I don't know nothing about, the word of God now has to mean so much more to me. I have to be able to lean into God so God can show me how to do life right. And so when a sign of your maturity is that now this book, this word, these 66 books, Genesis to Revelations now means something so critical to my life. If the word has not become that important to you, you still hadn't reached the age of maturity that's the law tradition was referencing community there are some things that the community does to uphold itself to make sure that things are sustainable to make sure that things are generational to make sure that things continue to prosper whether I'm here or whether I'm not a sign of maturity is that you are now extending your behavior beyond yourself and you're thinking about the people that you are connected to somebody say amen, amen. it is immaturity when everything is about you and the last thing is ethics. Ethics simply means how we treat each other fairly. When I'm doing this thing God's way, reciprocity becomes my standard. 
not something that is optional. Reciprocity means I am trying to make sure I always do unto others as I would have them do unto me. I make sure that I'm giving to you in the same manner in which I would like to receive. It is a sign of maturity when we can empathize with one another and it bothers and disturbs us when I am taking more than I'm giving. And so the sign of growth is that these three pillars begin to mean something so much to me. And so this young boy and this young girl, when they reach the age of 13, they are taken through this exercise, this bar mitzvah, this bat mitzvah. This Hebrew word means this. It means bar mitzvah means son of the commandment. Bat mitzvah means daughter of the commandments. In other words, the son who is now subject to the word we become listen y'all because you know i'm talking about us and not really them we begin to show god that we are mature when we decide it is now time for me to be submitted to the principles of god sounds real simple but in reality most of us are still submitted to the principles of our culture so principles of our household the misinformation that we were fed year and year after now we are also older now we're still being fed misinformation from our wounds misinformation from our issues misinformation from our fears and see i'm not a fool and think that that can automatically go away but i'm asking you in the effort of maturity when you're mature you're not waiting for something to just show up and when you're mature you go get it and so that means that i know i'm wounded but i still got to make a decision according to the principle i know i'm scared but i still got to make decisions according to the principle i know i've been hurt i've been abandoned i've been dropped i've been everything that you can name i'm going to dust and that to try to get it together but when i'm making a decision to show god that he can trust me i still find the principle which means I often have to do it scared. I often have to do it alone. I often have to do it misunderstood because I'm surrounded by people who hadn't decided to be mature yet. And so when you make mature decisions, your crowd look at you like you're dysfunctional. But in reality, you're trying to move to functionality in God. And this is God saying, I can trust you now. I hadn't got over the pain, but I still know what to do. Hmm. Heart still feels broken, but I do know what to do. Hmm. I'm alone, but I still can't act like I don't know what to do. And so I'm going to chase the principle until the emotion subsides. I'm going to do what he says, even while I'm wiping tears. Because it's my mature. I'm going to do what I, he says, even though my flesh wants to do something so different. It's because I'm mature now. And so you had up until age 13 to play. You had up until 13 to blame others and shift the responsibility of your actions on somebody else. But you let you yell out your window and say, but I'm 13 now. Mm. I'm 13. I could, I, I could point fingers. I could say this person did that and the other. But I'm 13 now. And so I'm taking responsibility. So just go ahead and give me my life back. Go ahead and hand it over to me. I'm responsible for what it becomes from this day forward. Can somebody work out an amen after hearing that? CYM is 13 today. And I prophetically declare that today is our bar mitzvah. Our coming out. Today, we stop blaming anything and anyone from the past. Today, we become sons and daughters of the commandments, taking full responsibility for where we go from here. Give me 
my life. I got it from here. Say that with me. Say, give me my life. I got it from here. And see, if you're like me, this year, good Lord, all of my junk has been in my face this year. And I'm not trying to belittle you or minimize what you've gone through. I'm not trying to even do that to myself. You've had plenty of opportunity, so have I. I had plenty of opportunity to blame other people. You've got legitimate reasons to point fingers at other folk. But let me ask you this. At the end of the day, after you get through blaming and pointing fingers, what good does it do? What do you actually gain from that except a little sympathy and a little pity from passer buyers? But nobody is stopping long enough to try to fix a thing because when they get through feeling sorry for you, when they get through saying you, you were right, you, you should be upset. When they get through joining you in your misery, you still got to turn around and build a life. You still got to figure out how to climb up out of your own hole. You still got to figure out how to glorify God. And so this day I'm declaring blaming season is over. It happened. Now what? They did it. Now what? It hurts you. Now what? You ain't the first to have your heart broken. You ain't the first to be abandoned or dropped. You're not the first. Finish off the rest for you and you. You won't be the last. The effects of the sinful world that we live in where people even with good intentions still miss the mark. Now that we're addressing reality as it is, now what? That season is over. And we have to tell God, I'm ready now. I'm ready for the law, tradition, and ethics. I'm ready to apply your word like I've never done before. I'm ready to be community focused. It ain't just me. Because I know you love people and so for me to please you, I've got to love people too. It ain't just me. Ethics. My wounds and my past have made me a little bit selfish. They made me a little bit scared. I practice self-preservation more than I practice community. But after today, that's over. I'm going to treat people as I would like for them to treat me. And even if they don't respond in kind, God, I know I did my part. I'm 13 now. And it's time to come of age. Galatians 4 and 1 describes to us where I believe we are, where we've been rather. It ends today. It says, now I say as long as the heir is a child, he does not differ at all from the slave. Although he really is the owner of everything. It says, I'm an heir. I got to make you talk to me today. Not that I'm trying to catch up for six months, but I need you to hear yourself say it. Say, I'm an heir. Come on, say it again. I'm an heir. See, that word by itself says this. I belong to somebody. I belong to somebody because I cannot be an heir, Rita, unless I'm a son. I cannot be an heir unless I have a parent somewhere thinking about me. And so that goes into this vein that since I'm an heir, I've got a father that's been, listen now, that's been storing up stuff for me, waiting for me to grow up. Waiting for me to demonstrate that I have the maturity. He's been thoughtful about me. He's been planning for me. But he cannot, in the, in the, in the effort of being a good father, give me stuff prematurely. He's waiting on me to take the word serious. He's waiting on me to take community seriously. He's waiting on me to be ethical with one another, to treat each other like we should treat each other, despite the inner turmoil we brought with us. He's got something for me. But here's the problem. Here's where it really gets real. 
It says that I'm an heir, but I'm acting like a child. And see, some of you may not want to admit that, so I'll go ahead and I'll admit it first. I can see why some stuff has not been given to me. I can actually see why some things have slipped through my fingers because I need to be honest with myself so that I can grow. I need to be honest with myself so I can hear God more clearly. There have been some areas in my life I act just like a child. And there's things that he desires to give to me, things he desires to give to you. But he said, I can't because you're being a child. And I began to look that stuff up. And I said, well, what's, what's, what describes a child? What attributes do I display, God, where it makes me look like I'm a child? And he gave me three in the definition. The first one is childish. Second one is that I'm untaught. And the last one is unskilled. Childish untaught and unskilled childish childish means you look like you ought to be further alone than you are but you're acting beneath your potential childish Childish means you cannot say you haven't been exposed to opportunities for growth. You cannot say that it hasn't been presented to you how to do better. But somewhere along the way, you decided to act beneath what you have been told. Childish. See, it means I don't look like a child, so I'm childish. I'm acting like one which makes the father withhold. I'm untaught. Untaught, again, does not mean that I haven't been exposed to. It just means that I haven't taken it seriously. Untaught actually means I've, I've been around the truth. I just don't want to walk in it. Because I'm immature. Because truth makes demands of me. Truth makes me uncomfortable. Truth makes me deal with myself. Truth makes me let go of my past. Truth makes me release my excuses. And so I decided that I'm going to be untaught. I was taught, but I'm undoing it. And God says, if you're going to function like that, i got to keep holding back the stuff for you. And then lastly, because I'm talking about us, I'm talking about who we've been, who we are up until today. Because after today, this is going to change. We're not going to take this stuff for granted anymore. We're not going to look for ways to, to, to circumvent instructions. We're not going to keep making excuses about bad behavior that springs forth from poor teaching and bad wounds. Unskilled was the last one. Means that I have not dedicated or focused in my development in the direction of my righteousness. I'm still scattered, covered, and chunked. I'm still all over the place, still trying to please everybody, still trying to do everything, still hadn't decided I'm going to become who I ought to be. And so God says you have not developed the skill in the area in which I want to use you. Please understand that receiving the things from God is contingent upon you do the work he called you to. Not because you cry about it, not because you beg for it, not even because you sow to it. You got to be able to handle it. Somebody say, I'm 13 now. I'm 13 now. And so if you understand that I'm practicing, I'm, I'm weak in those areas, it makes sense that Paul would say, you look no different than the slave. You're the heir, but you don't look no different than the slave. How does a slave live? The slave is not his or her own person. The slave has boundaries forced upon them. Their world is smaller than their potential. The slave is working for others who are, who are enjoying the fruit of their labor, but the slave is not benefiting from their efforts. The slave has no control over his or her destiny. He says, listen, you are the heir, but you look just like somebody who don't have no control over your life. Can anybody honestly say he's talking about me? My life is so much smaller than it ought to be. You look like the slave. 
But then the text ends by saying, but you're really the Lord. You're really Lord over all. Listen to this. I'm an heir. I should have some stuff, but I'm acting like I ain't got nothing. I'm acting like I should be managed, but I really am a Lord. Lord means own. I am really the owner of all of this, but I looked a little deeper in this thing. It also said I also have the power to decide. I've had all these contradictions. I'm living like a slave, but I'm really an heir. I really have power, but instead I'm acting like a child. I'm still acting childish, untaught, and unskilled, which is why my world is smaller than it should be, and my glory is less than it could be. But not after today. Not a shout message, isn't it? It's a permission message. Verse 2 sounds like punishment, but it really represents grace. It says, but he's under guardians and managers until the date set by the father. Guardians and managers, tutors and governors represent all of the people that God keeps sending your way to try to teach you how to come out of this place. Everybody under the sound of my ear has had more than your share of opportunities to sit at the feet of people who know how to get you to the place that God is calling you to. We are behind. Somebody in the car with you look at them and say, yeah, we behind. We are behind. God says, I keep trying to give you chance at the chance. And you running your teachers off but not after today. I'm grown now. Also, these brothers out here who know how to work on equipment, they'll tell you, because the scripture says a governor is set over you. A governor is sometimes a device that's placed on some equipment, right, Milt? What does the governor do? It reduces the speed. It prevents you from going as fast as you could. God says you got the potential to be great, but I got to put constraints on you. Because I can't have you fast and foolish. I can't have you get to a place prematurely and you don't know what you're doing. So I got to slap a governor on you to slow you down. You're frustrated because you can sense the power that's in you, but you just can't put that thing to the floor yet. God says, I got to keep having a governor over your life because you might reach the destination too soon and make us all look bad. Quit asking to be blessed while you're being untaught. Quit asking to be promoted if you can't submit to teachers. Quit asking to be greater if the word is not preeminent in your life. It just doesn't work that way. Talking to me too. I know I'm late. I know I'm behind. So how do we escape childishness? And then I'm going to let you go. The same writer Paul told us how to get away from childishness over in Corinthians, the love chapter. When he said, love is kind. Love is patient. Love is not arrogant. Love is not unbecoming. Love never fails. Y'all remember that? Love is the key to escaping. But let me make sure we make this simple. Let's go back to an old lesson. I'm not talking about butterflies. I'm not talking about wanting to listen to love songs with somebody. I'm talking about the God kind of love. And the God kind of love is that word benevolent. That word benevolent means this. Please remember this because this is what's going to help you get to a place of maturity. This is the first place we've got to decide. The word benevolent means my intentions are to do good by you. No matter what. No matter how you show up. No matter how you handle me. No matter what you say to me. I have intentions to do good by you. So. Love is kind. Since I'm determined to do good by you, I got to be kind. 
But pastor, what if they mean to me? We're not talking about that. We're trying to grow up. We're trying to be mature because if I can, if I listen, because if I can demonstrate maturity, the father will release some stuff. So I'm not even worried about my enemy giving me something. I'm not even worried about you liking me. I'm not worried about you being a fan of me. I got to treat you kind because I'm trying to get heaven to release some stuff for me. And so I'm not going to let the fact that you don't like me keep me from getting what God has in store for me. So I can even love my enemies now because you might be standing between me and my blessing. By the time heaven releases what it's supposed to give, to me I don't forgot the fact that you rolled your eyes I don't forgot the fact that you talked about me I don't forgot the fact that you slandered me I don't forgot the fact that you just didn't tell the truth about me I'm gonna be good to you because again I'm not trying to convert you into my fan I'm trying to get the father to convince convince the father that I'm 13 now hmm. so I can be kind I ain't got to be that. Love is not arrogant. Uh, listen, listen. I, I, I ain't trying to act like I'm more than what I am. Because if I act like I'm more than what I am, that makes heaven believe I don't need what it has. So I can be humble when I'm with you. Because, again, I ain't trying to impress you. I'm trying to impress him. I'm trying to move heaven. God just sent you to me to try me, to test me, to see if I'm committed to this thing. So your reaction to me won't even move me anymore. Now, last year when I was 12, I might have told you about yourself. Last year when I was 12, I might have plotted how I was going to get back at you. But I'm 13 now, and I realize that your reaction ain't got nothing to do with God's promises. I got to be mature under fire. I'm going to do good by you, no matter what you do to me. No matter how you handle me, I'm going to do good by you. Because you're not grading me, he is. Mm. You're, <laughs> I'm going to do good by you because, listen, you can't hold me up, but he can. You can't stop my progress, but he can. Because I'm 13 now. And that verse goes on to say, because listen, he said, because when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I acted like a child. But when I made the decision to become a man, I put away childish things. See, 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 when I was a child, it was okay for me to act untaught. When I was a child, it was okay for me to be selfish. When I was a child, it was okay to be me to be ruled by my emotions and my fears. When I was a child, it was okay. But now that I'm becoming a man, listen now, it doesn't mean that I don't feel these things. I just don't let these things run me. See, that's why the word has to be so important to me that when my emotions show out on me, I got something that I can ask the Holy Spirit to pull up for me because he brings those things back to my remembrance. When I want to get you, the Holy Spirit says, listen, turn the other cheek. And as hard as that thing is, I turn because I don't want to forfeit what heaven might be getting ready to release to me. I'm 13 now. You can't get me like you used to get me. You still can hurt my feelings. You still can send me over into a tailspin of depression. But while I'm there, I've been reading so much scripture that when I'm sitting in my dark room, I hear this whisper come and says, lift up your head, O ye gates. Lift up your heads and be ever lifted up. But God, but God, but God they don't like me. They didn't like me first. Lift up your head, O ye gates. But God, I'm so tired of all the stuff I suffer. And listen, God, I ain't trying to act like I'm innocent. I'm not trying to say I didn't do some of the stuff that I did and I deserve it. He said, but I'm sick of suffering. He said, well, listen, 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 Wendell, if you want to reign with me, you got to suffer with me. I said, I'm older now. Look at somebody and say, I'm grown. I'm finally grown. Grown don't mean can't nobody tell you what to do. Let's clear that up. Grown means I'm looking for somebody to tell me what to do. I'm looking for somebody to teach me a better way. 
I'm looking for somebody to help me get to the finish line a little bit quicker. I'm looking for somebody to help me tighten up my skills. I'm looking for somebody that can point me in the right direction toward my righteousness. I'm grown. Does not mean you can't tell me nothing. It just means that I'm living in a way that I'm trying to get the code to the treasury that God has held up for me up until now. CYM, we're 13 today. The responsibility has shifted. It's on us now. You weathered the storm, thank you. You stuck with me, thank you. We've taken some lumps, some bruises, some accusations, and some exposures. Thank you. Some things were lies, some things were the truth. Thank you. But give me my life now. Somebody tell the Lord, give me my life now. Go on and give it to me. Appreciate you keeping it for me, safekeeping, but give it here. Because until I take possession of my own, you won't give me my own. Give me my life now. And I know I'm responsible, so guess what? We're going to be talking more. I'm responsible now. Guess what? I'm going to be reading more. I'm responsible now, so I'm going to be concerned about my people more. I got a community that I'm committed to. You told me in your word, do good by all men, especially the household of faith. That means I got to take care of my church first. Take care of my church family first. I learned how to perfect me right here in the house. I learned how to forgive right here in the house. I learned how to encourage right here in the house so that when I extend myself beyond these folk, I'm good with those folk out there. Because at least these folk also have the same expectations placed on them that is placed on me. Yes, I expect you to work hard to be good by me. Because I'm working hard to be good by you. I'm growing up now. I'm 13. I've come of age. <laughs> if you're making the decision with me, that Lord, I from this point on, I won't, they won't be able to say I'm childish. They won't be able to say I'm untaught. They won't be able to say I'm unskilled. If you making that decision with me so that, so that we can walk together, let's aggravate our neighbors one more time. Hit that horn for me. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you can play Travis. Please hear me because I don't want you to feel like I'm being insensitive in any way, shape, or form as to what has happened to you up to now. I am not delusional and thinking that you can click your heels and it all goes away. That's just not how this thing works. This is why we have to do it scared. But now we got to expand it. We got to do it broken. We got to do it wounded. We got to do it sad. We got to do it alone, Regina. We got to do it betrayed. We got to do it abandoned. We got to do it depressed. We got to do it confused. I just got to get it done. And sometimes I might move a little slower than I can, Travis, because the weight is heavy. Sometimes I got to take some Kleenex with me because I'm going to cry the whole journey. But I'm taking responsibility now. And even if the muscle is a little weak right now, I know that if I stay in the flow, I'll find my strength. Because I've learned that about life. Whatever I stick to, Mother Carter, I get a little bit better at. When I keep lifting, I grow, I get some muscle under that thing. And after a while, it don't sting like it used to. After a while, it doesn't surprise me like it used to. 
I can see it when it's coming and I can anticipate when it's leaving. I realize now that I go through moments. Nothing's here to stay. It's just coming through. And I refuse to act like it's permanent. I've been with God long enough to know that I don't have to be resilient. He's resilient in me. I, he said he declared about himself to think that he's the resurrection. And if he's the resurrection, that means that when I want to die, he's in me and he refuses to. Every time I've wanted to quit, I've got a long enough track record that I've tried to quit. So who else has quit as many times as I have? You, 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 you called it quit so much, but the God in you. See, I know that enough now. That I don't have to wait for him to show up. I call upon him. I'm at the point now like, God, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done, but I know you're not. God, it's over. It's over this time, but I know it's not over for you. So I'm going to go ahead and lay window down while you get up. He's proven to me time and time again. That's why it's so important to read the word. He's proven to me time and time again that his strength really is made perfect in my weakness. I've learned that sometimes I had to be broken to see him. Sometimes I had to be broken to return back to him, crawl back to him, limp back to him so he can perform triage for me. We got a long enough track record where I'm okay with telling him, listen to me now, I know him well enough to work up the courage because I ain't gonna lie to you my heart is racing right now because we've been saying it the whole time but it feels different right now I know him well enough now to go give me my life give me my life and I'm not gonna look over my shoulder at all the times I fumbled and messed it up I'm not you can punish me but I'm tired of punishing myself I'm tired I'm tired of mistreating me I'm tired of not acting like an heir. I'm tired of being seen as the slave, having to be submitted to my, 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 my ills, my, 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 my issues. I'm tired of those things telling me where I can go, when I can stay, how long I can be, who I can be around. I'm a Lord. I'm over it. I got the power to make a decision. And today I'm doing what? I'm deciding. Give me my life. I done felt sorry for myself long enough, fellas. Acting like I can't handle life. Acting like this thing is bigger than me. When I've been made in the image of God, I'm tired of compromise. I'm tired of settling. I'm tired of getting less than I deserve. I'm too grown for that now. I'm too grown for the knockoff. I'm too grown for the counterfeit. I'm too grown for the fair weather friend. I'm too grown for that right now. Ah, I'm too grown for that right now. I ain't got time to play with that no more. Give me my life. I'm ready now. Give me my life. And let's see what we can make of it. Let's see what we can build together. I ain't expecting every day to be great. I ain't expecting every month to be great. God, I'm even anticipating some bad years. But I know this, that when, I'm all, when it's all said and done, I'm going to look like you. I'm going to look like you. Because even though the Keisha, although the, the pain feels very intense in the moment, what I've learned about God is that if I can just get some days under me, if I can get some months under me, if I can get some years under me, then my vision clears up. See, it's hard to see clearly when I'm in it. When I'm right in that thing, it's killing me. It's hard to see clearly. But if I can get a year behind me, if I can get a year or two behind me, I can look back and see God's hand all the way through that thing. I can look back and see the purpose of it. I can look back and see that the pain was not for nothing. That God had to break me so he could carry me for a little while and talk more intently to me. I can see it now. And so we've done it enough so that even now that I'm in my emotions, my mind has not forgot our history. As sad as you may be in the season, as hurt as you may be, my mind is still saying, we've been here before, boy. We've been here before. We've been here before. And you know that when you come through this, he got something for you. He got something for you. Give me my life. Give me my life.
I got it from here. I'm too grown for this kind of life I've been living. I'm too grown for this. Mm. The takeaway says, from this moment on, I choose godly adulthood. I walk away from childish behavior. I will no longer go untaught. I will fine tune my skills in the direction of my righteousness. And the Father will entrust me with my inheritance. Hmm. Tell somebody I'm too grown for this. This is beneath me. This is beneath me. Say that to you. Say that to your soul. This is beneath me. So you got to get real, real. Because when, when you say it's beneath me, it's not that you're talking about anybody else. You confronting yourself because you chose yourself into this position. You you made decisions that got you here. You got to say this is beneath me. I'm far too grown for this for those of you that are watching and streaming that you may not be a member of this church but you're a member of this body receive this word it's a word of permission not guarantee you can declare today that this is your bar mitzvah, this is your coming out, this is your day of accepting responsibility for your remaining days. You can decide, God, I'm ready to grow up now. Give me my life. Give me the life you died for on Calvary. Give me the life in which you assigned angels to me. You didn't assign angels to me for this life I'm living now. You assigned me for, you assigned them to me for a life of glory, a life of great exploits, a life where I love with abandonment, a life where my cup runs over. I want to live. If that's you, and you have not accepted Jesus as your Savior, then right now you are so blessed to be at the beginning of your journey. All you got to do today is tell him, yes, I'm ready. I want you to repeat after me. Say this. Say, Father, I thank you for Jesus. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead and because of my confession and because of my faith the Bible says I am righteous and I am saved Holy Spirit begin the healing process Holy Spirit, begin to lead me into truth. Holy Spirit, declare unto me what was said about me before the foundations of the earth. Holy Spirit, draw the right people into my life. Holy Spirit, cause the wrong ones to exit. And I will give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 13 years from my dining room table to here. 
That's who I am. I was walking through the building this morning and I had to repent to God. I said, you took me from a whisper to this. You have been faithful even when I haven't been. And for that, God, thank you. You've waited on me every time I sat on the side of the road. You waited on me every time I took a detour. You waited on me every time I got consumed by fear. And you guided us to this place. Thank you. But give me my life now. I'm ready to become the pastor heaven declared me to be. And lead our people to do all the things that were prophetically declared. A place of healing. 13,000 world changers, the initiators of businesses, ministries, the renewal of broken hearts and souls. Watch this a place where marriages can heal, a place where you can do a total work. Dipped us into every pain that we now are familiar with the infirmities of people. Thank you for preparing us for the ministry that's coming. You've broken us enough that we don't think so highly of ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Before we go, if those that are watching and even those who are out here prepare to give family you can continue to give as you've been giving and I say and thank y'all so much for how you're being faithful with your giving in this pandemic thank you for learning how to be a church in a pandemic thank you for that our deacons will be walking through in case some of you want to give while being here those of you who are streaming, you see at the bottom there how you can give at our website at cymm.org forward slash give. You can find us on the GiveLify app or you can give through our cash app at dollar sign CYM. Thank you for your faithfulness. I believe in the principles of God. You sow in a good soul. God will be mindful of you. I won't tell you how you'll get it back, but you'll get it back. God will be mindful of you. And we declare today we are good soil. And anybody that's ever did any farming will tell you that good soil ain't clean. Good soil got all kind of mess in it. So regardless of what we've been through, that made us good soil. All right, I got to let these people go. Thank you, Greenville. Thank you for everybody that supported us throughout the years. I keep saying us. Let me be personal. Thank you for supporting me. It means the world to me. When I receive love from you, when I receive correction from you, thank you for just believing in the ministry God gave me. All right, until next time, much love.